Mike Diaz is a partner at HTA Design. He's worked on many major new build and regeneration project. He's a member of the board of the Housing Forum and recently co-authored Build Homes, Build Jobs, Build Innovation with Mark Farmer. And that calls for increased modular delivery of homes. And of course, as is well known, HTA has the distinction of having designed the world's tallest modular tower in Croydon. So Mike, can you tell me a bit about HTA's journey into modern methods of construction? Because I guess, I mean, you're long established practice and uh, when you first started, the practice was dealing with a lot of the problems of the previous round of prefabrication in the 60s and 70s. Well, I think that's, uh, yes, nicely put. Um, well, I've been at HTA for, for 35 years now. So, and it is interesting that when I joined, uh, we were community architects working with communities, uh, largely refurbishing estates, but that moved very quickly into uh, knocking them down. And, um, and the knocking them down experience was really interesting, not directly informing our, our venture into MMC, but actually uh, it was interesting to see why estates failed, particularly large panel estates. And in truth, it wasn't always the systems. Um, uh, the systems created a perception, um, but largely it hid poor management, actually, lack of investment, lack of maintenance, and actually a, a crushing allocations policy that meant that the most deprived ended up with little choice, living in buildings that were poorly maintained. So, um, th and there was a political move really to, to address that in, in the 80s that, that you'll be aware of. Um, but it was interesting because it did, um, it was very formative for uh, HTA Design, um, a, a company I'm proud to work for, um, um, because it taught us very much that great housing isn't just about how it's made. I mean, actually, it can be made anyway if it ends up with great housing in great places with people that love living there in a way which is um, cost effective for them, um, then it doesn't matter really too much how it's built in our view. Um, our journey into MMC started many, many years ago, actually. Um, we've always been interested in better ways of building. Um, and uh, to be just a little bit controversial, if you like, um, when Design and Build came in in 1980, 81, or thereabouts, um, uh, we, were, we were quite concerned because we knew that construction required quite a lot of um, involvement of designers. Um, and, and actually, we had become excluded from that. And Design and Build has gone on and it's become very um, uh, the way that housing has been delivered. And, um, you know, it's had some great successes, but I think we're all beginning to become aware of some of the shortcomings of that. So our interest in MMC was in part um, because we wanted to be a designer in industry. We did not want to be a designer that got planning without a real understanding of how it would be made. And, and I think that's really important. It goes back to all of the um, architectural education that viewers will have had. And, um, you know, the great architects always had a love of, of the people that um, built the buildings that they designed and how they, um, how they built them, a good understanding of that. So MMC allowed us that. Um, the first project, uh, I might be wrong on this, but I think the first major project that we um, uh, were involved in was for Sentinel Housing Group um, at Oak Ridge. And um, was was a low-rise scheme, 350 homes, and was an estate regeneration project and um, was built beautifully and quickly. And um, we've done some um, feedback sessions with residents and occupied well. So our first exposure uh, was that. But we, we have a, a long history of involvement in everything from the um, what was known as the 60,000 pound house, uh, John Prescott's uh, initiative, um, through to some interesting projects um, involving systems such as Amphion, where we experienced firsthand what happens when the system um, 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 manufacturer goes bust halfway through construction. So um, we've got some scars. Now, um, the whole journey on MMC is not about, right, let's just, let's just use, let's just start using it. It's actually about understanding all of the intricacies about how things might go wrong, 
but actually with the benefit that you can reapply that knowledge and make sure that the systems are better and improved as you go. And that's how you go from building low rise to, to bigger buildings and more ambitious um, uh, projects. Your building at Savoy Circus was a, a poster child, really, of the uh, Building Better, Building Beautiful report with its uh, very rich detailing, as well as, of course, as its modular construction. And in his introduction to your report, Nick Boyce smith who's now setting up a, a new design body in government to drive up design standards, he, he suggests that modular is really the new Georgian. Is, is that how you see it? Um, so uh, what do you say when somebody like Nicholas Boyce Smith says something like that? Well, you have to sort of, to a certain extent, you have to go with the grain of, thank you very much, Nicholas, for um, putting that very, very positive view on um, MMC. But MMC is a system, is a way of producing housing. It's not the end result. And our engagement over the years with systems has been, some will provide, uh, some will provide great systems, but not necessarily great housing. And, and you can see that in, in the history of offsite manufacture. But it's not necessarily the case. I think that um, our interest and the reason we wrote um, the report was that we could see a, a link across to um, the building on the lessons that we'd learned from, from over 10 years of, of delivering modular homes and, and you know, the very real les lessons we've learned from that and the needs of the country coming out of a very difficult pandemic situation. We're not out of it yet, but um, there's going to be an e economic impact. So um, we saw a direct correlation between um, the need for more homes, um, modular manufacture as a means of production, and then the benefits of jobs that can come with that. So in part of the industrial strategy, and very much, I suppose, going back to your first question, looking at what happened in the post-war era, um, uh, I think it was Macmillan, really, uh, a conservative um, a housing minister who led, um, uh, prime minister who led on um, uh, um, the, the 300,000 homes a year initiative back then, um, and the great competition between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party at the time in terms of who would build most homes. And unfortunately, at that time, they lost sight of quality. And um, where we share uh, an ambition with Nicholas, absolutely, is that the outcome of, of modular delivered homes has to be beautiful homes. It doesn't really matter whether they're Georgian in style or uh, contemporary or you know, any style, if it's um, the chosen style in terms of the client, the planning authority, the local people, um, and the architects that um, are having the vision of what the place might be like. If the, art, if the system of production, the modular system, can enable that, that's a sort of system that we would support. Very good. So the pandemic has shown uh, that our flexibles, uh, sorry, the pandemic has shown that our buildings really need to be uh, flexible to respond to changing lifestyles. And I, I think flexibility also is a key part of how we generate a circular economy. Uh, can modular provide that or are we just uh, restricting ourselves to little boxes? Um, big boxes, uh, you don't have to be little boxes. Um, I mean, it's a little known fact actually. Uh, um, we, we've built modules of 5.4 meters wide. You know, um, you do need to have an escort on the transporter and roads good enough and bridges high enough to get them through, but we've built schemes with that size module in London. Uh, not every system can do that. And, and uh, so I think that um, your question is really interesting because um, I watched a video, um, a, a, a YouTube video uh, just yesterday that looked at the HUD uh, Housing and Urban Development uh, Initiative in 1976. I think it was Jimmy Carter was the president then. And where they realised they had a housing shortfall and a need to change the way they delivered. And it was really interesting watching that video because actually not much has changed in terms of what they were doing then and the innovation then and what we're doing now. Um, for us, what we have to do is build on um, the shoulders of the experience that's gone before. We, 
We're talking to a lot of people, a lot of local authorities at the moment in particular, who are very keen to start the journey on MMC and modular. And we say to them, don't do that, please. Don't just start it from scratch. Work with people that have done it before, work with systems that are under development and um, can be developed further to, to your interests. And so getting to the point on flexibility, of course, you can design in flexibility. Um, it's really important to understand um, the system. Um, but what we've found is that we're not yet at the first base. The first base is, can we come up with a system that is scalable and um, something that will allow local authorities and other housing um, developers to tap into a delivery system at scale that will allow its pricing to come down and to be competitive with um, the design and build process, which is primarily based on people, um, shall we say, um, in a very competitive environment, continually um, pricing uh, the supply chain and driving costs down sometimes against the interests of the quality of the project. Um, with, with modular, you don't have that advantage. You've got steady state, and that's what modular needs. So we are very confident that um, once we get to the point of having systems which are developed, um, scalable, um, we can quickly get onto um, the flexibility. And actually, we're really keen on multi-generational living and the future proofing of our housing stock assets. And actually, um, the whole carbon agenda now, I think that once we can work out what we mean by low carbon, which is a big issue, and what we mean by zero carbon, there's no doubt about it that factory made housing has the best chance of delivering to, to those standards. Very good. In spite of COVID, London still needs to build lots of houses. Yeah. So uh, how are you seeing things in the moment? I mean, clearly there was a sort of hiatus of delivery immediately after lockdown, but are, are you finding uh, projects are on hold going ahead or even increasing in pace to make up for delays? Well, I, London is a, an amazing city. We're, we're very privileged to have an office in London and to be part of the delivery of homes in London. Um, we honestly have not stopped through the downturn. We've actually grown. Um, I think we've taken on at least maybe more than 20 staff now over the last six to six months. And that's not just in architecture. That's our graphics team, our landscape team, our planning team. We've recruited uh, strongly into that. And when I look at where the work's coming from, it's um, built to rent, which is really interesting. We thought that was counter cyclical. Uh, and there's a good uh, marry up between build to rent and modular. So that uh, works hand in hand. And local authorities. Um, one of the fantastic things that we're seeing is a return of municipal housing uh, as an aspirational form of housing, not just um, council housing, just great housing, beautiful housing, well delivered. And uh, there's an interest as well in modular delivery and MMC. And we, I must be careful here because we're, we're passionate about MMC. And of course, we, we're quite well known for modular, but we're passionate about NMC. Um, and so it's been, um, it's been quite exhilarating, Peter, if I'm honest. I think that we, um, we were all locked down, weren't we, at the time? I had a little bit of time to write um, the report with Mark, Mark Farmer, uh, which was a brilliant uh, experience. It's not often you have time to think. Um, but that time's gone. This second lockdown that we're, we're heading into, I fear, is going to be quite different than the first. We're all now used to working on Zoom. We've found ways of working on site safely. Uh, Modular does allow us, in any case, to work in a COVID-safe environment. Our office is um, open. We have maybe 40% of our staff um, back to work in, in the office and the rest working from home. Um, I think cities are the future. I think London leads the light, and it will lead the way out of um, this current situation with with beautiful buildings if you go to london you'll see ev nearly every site is is open and, and active and, it, and it's brilliant to see and um I'm, I'm confident that um at some point in the future we'll look back on this experience that we're all going for through and we'll say well we all went through that together wasn't that an amazing thing very good i'm very glad to end on the top 
optimistic note. So, uh, Mike, uh, thank you very much for your insights and thank you for that really interesting report. And I think it, it's particularly interesting. It does focus very much on uh, modular and, and uh, uh, something that really can uh, move the uh, debate on and actually get buildings built uh, in greater quantity using it. So thank you very much. Very good. That's a pleasure, Peter, as always. Thank you very much.